Hi, this is Vanessa from Cool Temperate Gardening in Canberra. Recently I've been taking cuttings from several of my plants to determine the best time of year to propagate each variety. Today's video shows the outcome of the black Genoa fig that I propagated. I took four branches off on the 8th of June, which is the beginning of my winter, and I managed to get more than one cutting out of some of the branches, so there were seven cuttings in total. For four of the cuttings, I scraped the bark down to the cambium layer, which sounds so much nicer than saying I hacked it, and I put the cambium area into rooting hormone and popped them into cocoa coir mixed with perlite. I've been watching some of the videos that Nathan from Live Love Canberra has been putting about his fig cuttings and he uses plastic pots so he can see the roots growing. I loved that idea so I'm onto it now Nathan and I've put it into clear plastic. I then put it into a tray with more cocoa coir that's wet in a, an attempt to make the environment more humid and to deter myself from having to water them. For the fifth cutting, I wanted to see what happens if you planted a fig cutting upside down. So I scratched the top part of the cutting down to the cambium layer, put that into rooting hormone and stuck that in to compare with how it grows against the other four. Then there was two cuttings left that I've popped in the fridge because I want to see how they propagate in a couple of months time after having some more cold therapy. I kept the little greenhouse with the lid on inside the house to have a, a warmer environment. And I had a white Adriatic cutting that I kept outside in a humid area to compare the growth rate with those of the fig cuttings that I put inside on the same day. By 5th of July, one of the cuttings had formed a figlet, which I removed so that the energy could go towards the roots. There were small little leaflets coming on the others. One of the cuttings looked like it wasn't even going to live. By 14th of July, they all seemed to have leaves, but no roots. By 23rd of July, I could see one root coming through. That was six and a half weeks after they had first been cut and propagated. Amazingly enough, that was from the plant that didn't put any energy into the leaves. By 25th of July, we had a lot of roots on one of the other cuttings and it was looking like it was doing very well. On 1st of August, I decided to pot up whichever cutting had the best roots and this was it. I potted it into I think it was just a normal bag of fruit tree potting mix and I put some more perlite into it. I didn't want to pot them all at once in case I was a bit premature with potting on. Sometimes they can die. The coir and the perlite fell off really nicely and you can see that the roots came from where I'd scratched the cambium layer and also from the node just above it. There seemed like there was plenty of roots there to keep me happy. Put a layer of vermiculite on top to keep the moisture in the soil so that it wouldn't dry out. Then I took it back inside the house and put it in the same room as it had been propagated so there'd be consistency in temperature. I put it in that large plastic crate with the lid slightly ajar to keep the humidity level up and there it is beside its sisters and brothers. On the 4th of August this is what it looked like, looked pretty good so I then potted up the remaining fig cuttings and put them all into that plastic tub with the lid slightly ajar to keep the humidity level good. 7th of August they look pretty good. My lessons learned from this experience is that I'll continue to use the damp cocoa coir in the bottom of the propagation box or greenhouse or whatever it's called because it gave me the confidence to not have to water my cuttings each day. I felt that there was some way that those plants were staying humid and therefore I didn't seem to get any rotting of the feed cuttings. I'll continue to use the clear plastic pots in future. Thanks for that, Nathan. 
possibly recycled soda water bottles though. I didn't like using the perlite though because I kept mistaking the white pebbles for roots and I was disappointed to find no it's just perlite. Cuttings taken on the 8th of June and now ready by early August but they're not hardened for the Canberra winter and so they need to stay inside. So that's a bit of a disadvantage. I now have to hog inside the house space to protect these figs until the frost is over in let's say early November before they can go outside. For four fig cuttings I could cope. If I was doing lots of fig cuttings I probably wouldn't have enough room inside my house for them and I don't have a greenhouse so I'd need to think twice about whether I wanted to take the fig cuttings in early June. However the good point about taking the cuttings in early June is they will have such a good chance to grow strong for the entire of the growing season and their branches will become lignified and be able to cope with the cold weather better come next winter. I've been taking cuttings at staggered intervals throughout the whole of winter and at the end of winter I will decide when I want to take my fig cuttings in future. At the beginning of this video you saw that I had taken one cutting to plant upside down. I'll do a separate video on that activity as well as separate videos for the cuttings that are in the fridge. As for the white Adriatic cutting that I took on the same day as these cuttings, it stayed outside for the last few months. It has not had growth of roots or shoots yet. Thank you for watching and sharing my journey.